Hi, hello, and welcome to Rebel Unicorn Crafts. Now that I like glue all and I've given it the stamp of approval, I think we need to figure out if I actually like other mediums. I've been kind of set in just using water, and while I do find that to work for me as well as be a low cost alternative, and I'm all about saving people money for when they want to get started, I want to see what happens. So I'm going to pit glue all against the infamous. Flow Troll Flood, the gold standard of the Liquitex, and then I found a couple other ones. I've got this Montmartre Acrylic Flow Medium and Pouring Masters Gloss Medium. Let's see how they stack up. I will be rating each medium on their mixing, pouring, finish, and price points. Before we get started testing, pause the video here and vote for your favorite one before you know which is which. I've got all my canvases laid out here. They're little five by sevens. We've got glue all, then flow trawl, liquid text, pouring masters, and the Montmartre. Next, I need to decide the ratios of which I'm going to mix my paint with my pouring mediums and if necessary, any water. So I did consult the backs of the bottles and I know there's more information online, but I wanted to do this partially because it was late and I didn't feel like spending the extra time, but also kind of how most people would do this. They would look for any instructions um, and most of them did not give me any sort of quantities I did get some instructions on making sure things were thoroughly mixed with no air bubbles, letting them sit, that type of thing. So I'm going to have to kind of just go with what I know and what I've observed and also what feels right. So we'll do the glue all, which is one to one plus some water, flow trawl, a similar scenario. And then I'm going to try to just do a one to one ratio and see where it ends up with the other pouring mediums to see how well that holds true. Another modification I'm going to make different from what I usually test is not using Craftsmart paint. Liquitex and some of the other ones do suggest using specific types of paint and I don't want to use Liquitex because I don't have it on hand as well as it's really expensive in comparison to some of the others. So I'm going to use a higher grade paint quality um, than what I usually use Craftsmart. So I'm going to use Arteza and Dick Blick acrylics for this because they have some natural gloss to them and I think they're going to work better with these mediums in general. I'm going to show in a sped up way how I mix each one of one of the colors for each pouring medium just so that you can get an idea of how I did it and how that affected my results. So we'll start off with glue all. And for this, yes, I did one part paint, one part water, and then I added one, two, I think three pipettes of water in to get the right consistency. Next up we had the Montmartre and this I tried not to use any water. I wanted to really shake that up and make sure I got a good consistency and I tried to start with one to one and I had to keep adding more and more because while the liquid in that bottle is quite fluid, when you add it to the paint, some sort of gelling activity happens, so it, it does keep more of its voluminous viscousness. For this one, I ended up with kind of two parts of the pouring medium to one part paint. Then I shook up my flow trawl and I mixed this one up, and this one was another one to two ratio, but I also added a little bit of water, not as much as with the glue all, but a little bit. As a side note, this one was easy to mix. Things came together quickly um, compared to the Montmartre, which really involved a lot of stirring. 
Next was the Liquitex, and after shaking this one up, I also added this one and about a two to one ratio. I wish I had done almost a two and a half or a three parts of the medium to one part paint because it really stayed thick and you'll see that later after I let it sit, it set up more and I should have gone in and checked it. But this one, it was a nice mixing experience. It was not lumpy or anything. It mixed together very nicely. And finally, we have the Pouring Masters. And this is specifically, it says a gloss pouring medium, which might have something to do with the stink. Holy moly, this one smelled so bad. It was, it smelled toxic. You know, I probably should be working in a well-ventilated room regardless of what I'm doing, but I had to open the window and it was cold out wide open in order to endure how badly this smelled. It was, it had quite a stench. And the other thing was when I did start mixing it together, uh, you are able to get a pretty smooth consistency, but it seems to almost react with the paint right away and it gets a little lumpy and you have to really kind of work with it. So uh, I saw this on both the Blick as well as the Arteza ones and I did not enjoy mixing this one up at all. In addition to the smell, I had to use a ton of this. This one I did even just to get to the same consistency as any of the other ones. I had to do three parts of it to one part paint. Here's how I'm going to be rating the pouring mediums. I'm going to be rating out of a 10, 10 being the best for each mixing, pouring, finish, and price. I will do price last so that it is a basis of quality uh, in addition to the actual cost of it. For glue all, I'm giving it a nine. It was a pleasant mixing experience. Same with Floetrol. Liquitex, I'm downgrading to a seven while it was smooth and nice to work with. Uh, it's a confusing mixing process. You have to let it set so there are no air bubbles but then it thickens. So then if you adjusted, then you'd have to wait again. And I don't know how long it would take you to mix something up. Montmartre was also a nine and Pouring Masters, I'm giving it a three. I frankly hated it. It gets some points because it is mixable. I repeated those steps as uh, closely as I could for my other colors. I'm gonna keep this simple with three colors per painting because these are a lot of little paintings, but let's get started with the actual pours. Because of how stinky that um, Pouring Masters one was, I am putting on gloves <laughs> just because I wanna protect my skin extra. And I'm going to be doing just the general dirty cup test. I'm gonna be pouring down the side so I don't disturb it as much and just seeing what a dirty cup pour looks like with each of these mediums. First up is glue wall. This shouldn't have any huge surprises because with the same technique, same mixing as my previous test. And in general, you know, it works pretty good. I like the effects that this creates. And I'm curious to see if this one uh, dries and has as nice of a finish as my previous one did as well. With this, you get a few cells. It does keep the color is fairly separated, but there is a little muddying and you get some nice kind of ribbons within it. Next up, we have the Floetrol and I have to admit that Floetrol is not my favorite additive to use, so I may be biased. And I also may have had this mix off a little bit because it seemed a little more liquidy than normal. Um, but here are the general results of a dirty cup flow trawl. This one, the colors really did seem to muddy and that might've been my fault. I might've added one pipette too many water uh, and you get a ton of cells. This is pretty much just a cell based painting. So if what you're after is cells and cells almost exclusively, then flow trawl is probably the medium that you should choose. 
Next up was Liquitex and I was really excited about this one and I should have stopped what I was doing and remixed these, but I was impatient and I wanted to move on and see how all of them were. After this had sat, it had definitely kind of become more viscous and more like a pudding consistency. So this should have been thinned more. Um, I, I don't particularly like the fact that there's not more instructions on the back of the bottle because this is a fairly expensive medium to use and it's supposed to be the gold standard. So in order to test it, you have to either do a ton of research or trial and error, which could become expensive. So in general, I should have stopped what I was doing. This is too thick, but it does keep the colors completely separate and you can already tell kind of while you're doing the pouring of it that it's going to be really glossy and beautiful with the finish so i'm going to have to retest this one next we have the stinky pouring masters and you know i didn't like doing this one because it smelled so potent and toxic <laughs> Um, also, while this painting turned out okay, I liked it in general, but I wasn't very impressed with its ability to kind of keep the colors separate. There was more muddying of the colors than I would personally prefer. And finally, we have the Montmartre ones, and I don't know if anybody watched my review of the Sargent art for pouring and how I said that it moved a lot like jello or gelatin. This one has very similar vibes. It turns the paint into kind of a jelly or like jiggly consistency, which is interesting to work with um, and kind of poses its own challenges in some ways, but in general, this one worked pretty well. Uh, does not keep the colors as separate as the liquid text, does not create as many cells as something like Gluol or the Floetrol, but this one I think deserves another shot as well because it seemed to keep the colors more separate than the Pouring uh, Masters one. So I'm, I'm curious about this one. I did a super quick torch on all of these being very hesitant to light the toxic smelling pouring masters one on fire, but I did touch it and it didn't seem to do too much on any of them. So I'm, I'm going to just kind of call that no effect. Let's add our next score in for pouring for glue all. I'm going to give that a seven. Pretty good. It's not my favorite pouring effects. Floetrol. A six, again, not my favorite. Liquid text, I'm putting an asterisk on this seven. It probably should be higher, but there was some user error, but there's also unclear instructions. So a seven. Montmartre, I'll give that an eight. And the Pouring Masters, I'm giving it a six because it worked pretty well, but uh, it's just something about it not liking. Okay, here they all are. And a few interesting things off the bat. Uh, it doesn't look like any of them cracked. I'm gonna have to look a little closer. But these two, there's still some wetness that these didn't have, but it's almost, I'm kind of wondering if it's almost an oil separation or something. I don't know. It doesn't, it feels a little oily. Maybe not, maybe. I don't quite know. But let's take a closer look at all of these. So here is, this is the glue all one. And it's pretty shiny. No cracking, pretty nice, but there was definitely some muddling of the colors. The Floetrol one had the most number of cells. It's not that shiny. It's kind of shiny, but not as shiny as the glue all. 
And there was definitely muddling of the colors there. I wish that I had done a better job of rechecking my Liquitex one because it was definitely too thick. Now they do say in it that you need to let it sit so that all the air bubbles are out, but then it rethickened, which I see happen sometimes. This one is super shiny. It is beautiful and the colors stayed completely separated. Now, the Pouring Masters one, this one smelled really bad, but man, look at, it looks like there's resin on it. The other thing is, I mixed and mixed and mixed, but I must have left a few lumps in there because there are a few spots, but if you like really shiny resin-like ones, this would be good, but I didn't see that it preserved the colors well, and I had to use a ton of it, and it stank. And then this was the Mont Marte, I believe. And it is also very shiny. And I think it did a little better. I would like to do another test with this versus the Liquitex and try to get the consistencies even better. Let's revisit our scores. So the glue all, I'm gonna give that a seven, pretty good. Floetrol, all right. Liquitex was amazing, a 10. Montmartre, I'm gonna give that a nine, and I would have given the Pouring Masters an even higher rating because of that gloss level you get, but I wasn't able to tell that I hadn't completely mixed those up, um, and the way you had to mix it was inherently lumpy, so I'm a little surprised at how many bumps I still had in there. So next we're gonna talk about price. As we've discussed before, these prices are gonna vary a lot based on availability, where you're ordering from, and a bunch of other factors. But here's what I paid for mine. For the glue all, which we know can be sourced much cheaper, I paid about 78 cents per ounce. I'm gonna give that a plus sign for, yes, that's worth the value of it. Floetrol, you can get for about 44 cents per ounce. That also, I'm gonna give that a plus sign for value. The Liquitex, I'm gonna give that one a, an equal sign because it, it's about what I would think. It's worth it, but it's real pricey, so it kind of gets a little knock for me. The Montmartre is slightly more pricey than Floetrol or Gluol, but I do think there's a big enough difference to justify that price. And so the same would go for the Pouring Masters, even though I don't really like the rest of that. I'm going to say that my top three for trying, as well as maybe for more testing for me, are going to be glue all again. I think it holds up. It kind of holds its own. The Liquitex and the Montmartre. Let me know down in the comments your experiences with any of these mediums and what you like to use. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a magically creative day.